Hello, Squirrel Tribe. So the question I have for you guys today is how long until our entire food supply is lab grown, is man-made, is created, has no nutritional value, doesn't resemble at all anything that has ever lived or breathed or grown from the earth. Like, I'm just curious because every day I look at things that are going on in the country, not even the whole world, but the country, and there's something else plaguing our food supply, right? So lately it's been the bird flu. Birds, right? You think of the bird flu, avian influenza, and you think of birds. That, that's all you think of. You don't think of other animals, other livestock, other anything else until now, because according to the reports, the bird flu now is the cow flu. Not really a new name, but they're saying it's attacking cows. So you have here, the H5N1 bird flu, which is this nice little numerical name, so it sounds less scary, H5N1. To me, though, it sounds way more terrifying than saying bird flu or avian influenza. When you give it letters and numbers, it makes it scientific and makes it sound like something from a test tube, which convince me it's not man-made, you know, H5N1. Convince me it's not man-made and then dispersed throughout. You're not going to be able to convince me of that. Anyway, so H5N1 bird flu virus spreads through dairy cattle. We've talked about this before, but and I hate to say it, it's getting worse, according to them, right? The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is asking states to take more steps to protect the public from, dun da 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 risks of raw milk, which again, we have talked about. I have told you time and time again, and I will continue to, to say it, that the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, is, you know, they're bullies, and they want their way, and you, again, you can't convince me that what they are doing is for the safety of you and I, for our own good, and not more so for the safety and the good of major corporations. Because if you and I are going out to our Amish farmers or even your local farmers and you're buying raw milk from them, guess what's not happening? You're not going into a grocery store and spending money in the grocery store for these large corporations. And that's the problem here. So when I see these things, I'm gonna bring you the information just so you're all fully aware of what they're saying. But even I, if you've been here on Scroll Try before, you know I don't believe a good majority of the things they tell us because we all know that it comes down to profit over people. When they're telling us, don't do this, don't eat this, don't drink that because it's going to make you sick. It's really, in my opinion, don't do this, don't eat that, don't drink that because it's not making them money. The way, oh, you want to have your own garden and have your own livestock and, and make all your own stuff? Ooh, no, if you do that, you're going to get bird flu. If you do that, you're going to get mad cow disease. If you do that, you're going to get whatever that pig one was, which I can't remember what it was called now swine flu. Ha, huh, there we go. You're going to get swine flu. You're going to get, you know, all these different things. It's only safe if you go to your local Walmart or Publix or Kroger or Fred Meyer, Albertsons or whatever else and buy it off the grocery store shelves. Then you know it's safe. Well, I hear you. I hear you, FDA. Um, but I'd also like to point out how many things that are being sold in grocery stores that have salmonella, have E. coli, have listeria, have everything else. So are you really safer going to the grocery store to buy your food from these corporations that want you to spend your money with them? So th get this. In an open letter posted to the agency's website, being the Food and Drug Administration's website, on Thursday, it urged states to warn the public more strongly about the dangers of raw milk and to test herds that produce it for sale. The FDA also recommended that states use their regulatory authorities to stop the sale of raw milk within the state or in areas where dairy herds have tested positive. On Thursday, Minnesota became the 10th state to report infected herds. This is, again, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. They are now saying 82 herds in the U.S. have tested positive for the H5N1 virus. Now, they're also going to tell you that your pasteurized, ultra-pasteurized, highly pasteurized milk is perfectly fine because we do know that the bird flu, avian influenza, H5N1, if you eat a bird that happens to have it, as long as you've cooked it all the way through, which you should always cook chicken all the way through. Chicken is not sushi, my dudes. Do not eat raw chicken. Do not eat partially cooked chicken unless you're trying to, you know, vomit out your butt, all your innards. Like, it's not a good idea. But as long as you cook it, guess what happens? It kills H5N1. So what they're trying to say is, unless you buy pasteurized milk from the grocery store, these dairy cows, they're going to give you the runs with this H5N1 is what they're trying to say. So they want you to go buy all the stuff. And now they're trying to say, tell the states, the states, all, all you guys, the bigwigs in the state, go ahead and make it a law. Go ahead and pass so that they can't sell raw milk. 
all in the name of our safety. That's what they're saying, in the name of our safety. But you and I both know it's not in the name of our safety, it's in the name of their profits. When things go wrong for them and they realize that you and I and people like us are not trusting them anymore and we're trying to figure out how to do things on our own, all they see is their profits dwindling, 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 and and everybody else becoming more self-reliant, more self-sufficient, more independent, more able to do things on their own. So then they have to come up with ways to either scare us into going back to the way they want us, which is in their grocery stores, or scare us that we're going to be fined or our homes taken if you have a garden. So hey, HOAs, make it illegal for your, your neighborhoods to grow their own vegetables. Make it so they can't have chickens. Make it so they can't have any of these things. Okay, I make sure we're all on the same, same page here. I know we generally are, but just pu putting it out there. Raw milk can carry high levels of the H5N1 bird flu virus because the virus appears to infect cows through their udders. It's just very convenient how this is suddenly happening. Let me just also be the first one to say, when the original uh, bird flu came flying around last summer and, and the summer before, and they said they had to kill millions upon millions of chickens, a lot of people believed it. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm saying we never saw a single shred of proof. Not one single time did we ever see proof. Tell me if any of you ever, ever saw a video, like literal video, live video, not some AI uh, messed with, not some Photoshopped, generated, whatever video, but a real live video of the death of said chickens that tested positive for H5N1. Anybody? Anybody at all? Bueller? Bueller? Bueller, like that's that's what it feels like to me. Just, I keep saying, I can't find it. I have not been able to find a video. Anything I have seen has been like three or four little chickens that are being slaughtered for whatever, not because an entire, you know, millions had to be put down because of H5N1. I'm just putting that out there, just so you know. Now, um, where are we at? <laughs> look, look, it is not yet known. Wait, where are we at? Not for human consumption. I think I went too far blah, 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 blah. The FDA doesn't allow the sale of raw milk across state lines, but several states allow the sale of raw milk for human consumption within their borders with varying requirements. Some states allow raw milk to be sold at pet food labeled not for human consumption, understanding that what people do with the milk in their own homes is up to them. Unless, of course, they can make it so it can't be sold at all, and then you don't even have the option of in your own home anymore because it's not, no longer legal. It's like a new, um, new form of uh, prohibition, but for milk. Can you imagine the new prohibition is, you know, underground milk being smuggled around through Canada and the, and the rail lines through Chicago, and it's like, get your whole milk. You want some 2%? I got some skim milk over here, you know, whatever. Anyway, raw milk Okay, we said the udders. It's not yet known whether uh, people can get bird flu by drinking milk contaminated with the virus. Then what the hell are we talking about? Why is this such a big deal? If they don't know, one, how do you not know? Okay, if you know all this other stuff, how have you not figured this other thing out? If you know that 82 herds have been infected and you know it's in 10 different states and you know it's in the raw milk, why haven't you tested people drinking raw milk? Oh, it's probably because you have, and there's nothing to say that these people are getting sick. You just want to scare people. That is the whole point behind everything that the main media does and our government does and these three-letter agencies do. It's to scare you and I and everybody else into falling in line, conform, do what we say, how we do it, when we do it. Do as I say, not as I do. That whole phrase, you know how parents say, do as I say, not as I do. Well, the FDA, they talk a lot of crap, but they have nothing to back it up with. It's not yet known whether people can get bird flu by drinking contaminated milk. Okay, then again, why are we having a conversation? Why does it even matter? Why are they putting all this stuff out to scare people if it's not even known if it... Eh. I have so many issues. It says, however, cats living on farms with infected cows have died after consuming unpasteurized milk and three dairy workers exposed to raw milk have been infected. But you just said, <laughs> but you just said literally FDA that you don't know if it can make people sick. And then you say three people got sick. Did they really though? Again, three people out of 82 herds and everybody else. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Three people could be paid to say, oh no, I got sick. <laughs> Bird flu. Come on now. Come on. Given the current and potential future risks that HPAI H5N1 virus poses to our nation's public health, it's got new letters attached to it now, as well as the health of our nation's food producing animals and wildlife, it is important 
to work together to minimize the additional exposure of humans and other animal species. This is according to Dr. Don Prater, who is the acting director of the Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition, who is leading the agency's H5N1 response. Now, beyond the bird flu, the FBI, FBI, close enough, the FDA, three-letter agency, right? The FDA says health risks of raw milk include illness, miscarriages, stillbirths, kidney failure, and death. Well, that's going to scare the crap out of a lot of people. Oh, I could have a miscarriage. I'm not drinking raw milk. I'll go to the grocery store. Oh, there can be a uh, stillbirth. I'm going to go to the grocery store. Kidney damage. Oh, let me go to the grocery store instead of, you know, my Amish farmer over here or my neighbor over here who can do these things. Like, do you know how many people are on medications for diabetes and heart disease and all this other stuff? And if you ever listen to the commercials of the complications or the things that could happen, it's like, I would almost rather just let my kidney fail because everything else that comes with this this medicine is friggin' terrifying and sounds way worse. Like, I'm just saying, like, okay. Beyond bird flu, the FDA says health risk, uh, no, we just did that. In addition to stronger warnings about the dangers of consuming raw milk, the FDA is asking states to monitor dairy cattle herds for signs of illness that would indicate infection with H5N1 bird flu virus and tell farms to safely discard milk from sick cows. But if you've already said that you don't know if the milk actually makes people sick, why do you want them discarding their money? That's what it is. Hey, we'd like you to pour your money down the drain. We'd like you to, you know, keep your cows and do all the stuff, but then pour your money down the drain. Don't sell it. Don't let people, you know, be able to bypass this grocery store because we need our large corporations who funnel their money into all of these, you know, presidential candidates and governors and whatever else in the, in the states. We need their money. So we need you to pour your milk down the drain, even though we can't say it actually will hurt anybody, but oh, there's the possibility. So... I need you to nip that in the bud there, guy. Like, okay, FDA. Any raw milk or raw, product, raw milk products from exposed cattle that are fed to calves or any other animals should be heat treated or pasteurized. Mm. Now, the FDA is calling on states to implement surveillance. Just want to make sure we understand exactly what I'm reading. The FDA is calling on states to implement surveillance testing for the presence of H5N1 virus in dairy herds that might be engaged in producing raw milk and to report their results to state and federal regulatory agencies. The word surveillance bothers me because that means they're probably going to have outside sources paying attention and survey, sur surveilling, that's a word, surveilling these herds. Mm, regulations, regulations. The agency said it would soon share new research and data on both bird flu virus and raw milk and raw milk products. I'm sure they will. Will it be accurate? Will it be real? Mm, that part I can't really tell you. Because um, then the next thing we have here that I came across, thanks to Sarah. Sarah sent me this one. Texas rancher developed anthrax from butchered lamb meat. So the next thing you're going to hear is, ooh, you should probably not eat lamb or not have lambs because you could get anthrax. Just, you know. Okay. So according to this, on Friday, which was yesterday because today is Saturday, anthrax disease in humans is rare. And when it does occur, it's usually during hot, dry summers. Well, what do you know? Or a right smack dab well, in the beginning of a hot, dry summer until, you know, then it's like a hot, tornado-y summer or hot, hurricane-y summer. But right now it's a hot, dry summer. That's why the case of a Texas rancher who developed anthrax in January of this year piqued the interest of investigators at the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, another three-letter agency. Um, January, but we're just now hearing about this six months later. Let's continue on. The rancher who survived his ordeal caught anthrax germ after butchering and consuming meat from a lamb that had died unexpectedly on his ranch. Okay, so nothing else to me matters. Whatever they want us to be worried about of anthrax from whatever animal you butcher and eat, I'm not worried about that. Just don't eat things that have randomly died and you don't know why they're dead. That feels more like common sense than anything. I feel like they should have put out an article that said, hey, listen, this guy got sick because he ate an animal that was already dead. And he was like, ah, well, I mean, it's already dead. I might as well chop it up and eat it. Don't do that. If you happen to be driving and you see a dead deer on the side of the road, do not stop and pick it up. I mean, no. You see a dead possum, a raccoon, or whatever the hell else people eat from the side of the road. Don't do that. It feels like a common sense thing. Now, I will say that as the years have progressed, uh, common, sense seems, common sense seems to have just like, you know, taken a small skedaddle, a little hike. But I feel like if you happen 
to just be walking through your yard, you know, checking things out and having a nice little stroll, a jaunt, if you will, and a whistling Dixie to yourself. And then you look over and go, oh, there's a random lamb and it's, it's dead. I don't know how it died. I don't know why it's dead. There's no puncture wounds, no anything else. I should eat it. No, you should not. If it's just randomly dead, do not eat the lamb or anything else. Stay away from randomly dead animals unless you like willingly killed it like it was perfectly fine and then you killed it and then you butchered it and ate it okay that's cool but if it's just chilling just a full like carcass dead thing in your yard mm -mm, no don't do it it's a horrible idea it that feels like common sense i maybe it's not but that feels like common sense to me the lamb had appeared healthy shortly before its unexpected death according to the cdc the patient and another person seasoned and cooked the meat the well-cooked meat was then consumed at a meal with three other persons, but only the man who butchered the lamb became ill. Because cooking it, I guess, was fine. So don't butcher the stuff. Y'all, either way, just leave dead things alone. I feel like that's the takeaway here. Leave dead things alone. But I will say, what this does is then it scares people. Again, people who just see things, read things, hear things, and don't step back and look at what uh, our our agencies have done to scare us into everything so you've got to take all of this into consideration one little thing you're you might be like oh take that at face value but if you literally step back and look at everything that's happened in the last couple of years no do not let them scare you from you know eating food and stuff but i i would like to personally implore you to not just butcher random things that have died from unknown causes in your yard or the side of the road or wherever else it just seems like a really bad idea. And the person who butchered it is the one who got anthrax. So then they cooked it and ate it and it was fine. Because we all know cooking things does make it perfectly fine. So again, I still don't know why they killed millions of chickens if all you had to do was cook it and be perfectly fine. Because I don't think they killed the chickens. They just said that so that the price of chicken would triple and people would panic buy and, and whatnot and willingly pay the price of $8 a pound chicken. Because there was no issue with certain parts of the chicken, but only other parts of the chicken were missing. And then there's a shortage of this, but not that. It's not like you can just grow chicken wings. They are attached to the chicken. Just You can't just grow chicken legs. They are attached to the chicken. So how do you have a shortage of chicken breast, but you have wings and legs or vice versa? Where, where did the rest of the chicken go? Anyway, that's not the point. That's not what we're talking about. I just want to say... Do not let these three-letter agencies that are more about profits for corporations convince you that eating in general is bad because what's going to happen is more and more people are going to listen to it and believe it and fall for the well you should eat that lab grown cell cultured chicken over there and you should eat these fake vegetables and fruits and whatnot and the next thing you know soylent greens on the table i'm just saying so that's that squirrel tribe i love y'all immensely these three letter agencies, man. I don't even know how to deal with them. Every time I see something, I'm like, ugh, this crap again? Like, are you serious? So let's all use your brains, our brains. It's hot in this Jeep. And don't let them scare you into not drinking the milk that you want to drink or eating the things that you want to eat. Again, unless it's just a randomly dead thing in your yard, stay away from it, okay? See you guys again later. Love you, bye.